ಪರಾತ್ಮಕ ಜಗದ್ಬೀಜಮಾದ್ಯ ನಿರೀಹಂ ನಿರಾಕಾರೇದ್ಯ ಯಾಯತೆ ಪಾಲ್ಯತೆ ಯೇನ ವಿಶ್ವ ತಮೀಷಂ ಭಜೆ ಲೀಯತೆ ಯತ್ರ ವಿಶ್ವ ಹರಿಂ ತತ್ಸತ್ ಹರಿಂ ತತ್ಸತ್ ಹರಿಂ ತತ್ಸತ್ ಡಿ ಅಟಿ today we are into the fifth session of this 15th chapter of bhagavad gita and before we proceed i would just like to sum up what we had discussed till now <clears throat> this world which we are experiencing this grass manifested world which we are experiencing krishna says that its seed its roots is in the invisible unmanifested state it is from the unmanifested invisible that this visible manifested gross universe has proceeded <clears throat> and it is that root that seed is what we actually refer to as a god the whole struggle of the human life is to go back to the roots we won't be able to understand the mysterious nature of this manifested world unless we go to its roots it is in the roots that the mystery gets unresolved so human life's main purpose is to unravel this mystery by going to the roots and not remain just caught up in this so called visible manifested gross world which we are experiencing krishna says that this entire world which we are experiencing starting from the invisible to the visible from the unmanifested to the manifested everything is ashvatham this whole universe is compared to a tree just like on a tree you will find countless numbers of birds perched and chirping similarly in this tree of this world we human beings not only human beings but all kinds of creatures we are perched here and we are making all kinds of noises here chirping 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 the hustle bustle and the activity which we see here you can just imagine as if it's like countless numbers of birds perched on different branches of this tree and chirping there endlessly these birds are born in that tree they die in that tree and in between birth and death they are busy eating fruits sweet and bitter fruits expecting that they will become happy and fulfilled which never happens and why they don't, be, don't why they don't become happy and fulfilled the reason is that as bhagwan shankaracharya so beautifully says this so called the manifested world the whole thing called world jagat or creation it is just like a water seen in a mirage just like no one can quench one's thirst by drinking the water seen in a mirage similarly no matter what you acquire or get in this world the human being's thirst is never going to be quenched so this is the great conclusion which is kept before us by our scriptures and great masters like bhagwan shri krishna and bhagwan 
Shri Shankaracharya. And when we have this kind of a correct understanding about this world, the first natural outcome of this understanding will be what? A natural turning away or the tendency of not clinging to it. This clinging is a very important element. We are presently clinging to the different things of this world. This attachment, clinging through attachment. This is the cause of our unending misery and sufferings in life. Clinging through the cord of attachment. Attachment to something which is like a water in a mirage. Now what will happen when we get attached to something which is like a mirage-like experience? The result of that is going to be misery and suffering alone. That's why Krishna says that no one understands the real nature of this world as it is being told by the scriptures. And if someone understands, the natural outcome of that will be non-attachment. So this non-attachment is described to be a great weapon. Shastram, Asanga Shastram. Shastram means weapon. And Asangata itself, non-attachment is compared to be a weapon. And it is with this weapon of non-attachment that one is supposed to cut asunder this entire samsara vriksha. The whole range of samsara vriksha has to be cut asunder. Cut asunder means, Shankaracharya says, literally uprooted. Udhritya, do not leave the roots behind. Completely uproot this tree of the samsara from its very roots. And when we do that, then we become ready to institute our search for the supreme reality. How true it is. Every seeker of the truth, we are all seekers of the truth. We want to know what is true in our life. What is the true thing in our experiences? Whatever we are experiences, it is a mixture of truth and falsity. And we have taken that which is false to be true. And what that which is actually true is totally unknown to us. Unless this confusion is cleared from the human mind, the human life will be gripped by endless misery and suffering. So it is only once we develop this wonderful quality of non-attachment to this mirage-like world, then we become competent and eligible to start our search for the true nature of the Supreme Reality, which is also our true nature, which is referred to by the terms called Brahman Atman. Now, from this stage onwards, if we have to successfully proceed in that direction, we have to develop certain qualities, without which the search for the Supreme Reality will not become successful. What is that? Krishna says, Nirmana Moha, becoming devoid from Mana and Moha. Mana means to become devoid of pride, Moha means to become devoid of non-discrimination. Nirmana moha. Jita sanga dosha. Becoming devoid from the defect of attachment. Affa attachment itself is a disease and it's a defect, a serious defect. Dosha. Sanga dosha. To become freed from the sanga dosha. And then what? We have to become adhyatmanitya. Adhyatmanitya means continuously engaged in our spiritual search. Now this man's only one concern will be to extract that which is true from all that which is appearing to be true. It is a wonderful quality which every human being is endowed with. We all have the capacity, but we haven't used it till now. When we begin to use it, you will see its impact on human life, the quality of human life itself. It is a 
very foundational transformation in the human personality can be seen when this kind of extraction of the truth, separating it from that which is appearing to be true, when, th when this begins to happen, something wonderful is waiting to come into that person's life. So Adhyatma Nitya. Now this person is continuously engaged in the search for truth. And what? Vinivritta Kama. This person has got no more desires for anything from this world. How will he desire? Any person who has understood the mirage-like nature of this world which we are experiencing, how will that person have any desire to acquire something from this world? When you know it is like just like a water seen in a mirage, automatically that person will not be in a position to hanker for anything from this world. Hanker for one's selfish satisfactions. That is the main thing. Hankering and desire for one's own selfish satisfactions, that person won't be able to do it. So that person's heart will be completely freed from desires. Then, Dvandvair Vimukta Sukha Dukha Santne. His mind, his heart will be freed from the dualities of likes and dislikes for experiences of happiness and misery. It is the human nature that we always get attached to experiences which make us happy. And we have an aversion for all those experiences which make us miserable. So this person becomes completely freed from this dvandva. Dvandva means this duality. Duality of likes and dislikes for likes for happiness and dislike for misery. He becomes neutral to all kinds of experience. This neutrality is of great spiritual virtue. No matter what happens in life, this person is always steady and neutral. Whether good things happen, whether favorable things happen, or whether certain things are unfavorable, and that is the real nature of this so-called human life, it will always be fraught with favorable and unfavorable situations. That is the very nature of life, everyone's life. No life is freed from this duality. But the human capacity to remain neutral in the midst of all these opposing kinds of experiences is what really makes that person capable to now institute the search for the supreme reality. This neutrality has to come into the human life. As long as we are not neutral to the kinds of experiences we are having, as long as we are swayed by these opposing kinds of experiences, that mind is unfit for inquiry into the, into the true nature of the supreme reality. So this neutrality is a tremendous quality which has to come into the human life. Gachanti amurha padamavyayam tat. So a person who is endowed with, with all these qualities, he becomes fit. Gachanti amurha padam avyayam tat. He attains, he becomes fit to attain that supreme reality. So we had seen Tatapadam tat parimargitavyam Yasmin gatana nivartanti bhuya Tame vachadyam purusham prapadye Yata pravrti prasruta purani We have seen and in the process of seeking the supreme reality, the way is to take refuge with the supreme reality. And we have seen the meaning of taking refuge. This is a very important element in the search for the supreme reality. Taking refuge means to make this individual, small identity, dissolve gradually in a graded manner into that limitless entity called Brahman. It may not happen immediately, but that is the main struggle of spiritual life. Once again, I repeat this. What is the meaning of surrendering to God or taking refuge at the feet of God? It means the constant struggle of the individual human being 
to dissolve his limited individual identity into the limitless entity called God. It is in and through this kind of a self-surrender that we institute the search to understand the true nature of God. <clears throat> and what is this true nature of the God? Na tad bhasayate suryo na shashanko na bhavakaha yad gatva na nivartante tad dhama paramamama We had come up to this point. And this God which we are talking about, it is something to be experienced. What is the true nature of God? Na tad bhasayate suryo there, this sun doesn't shine. The light of this sun cannot illumine that. In fact, this is material light. But it is God's consciousness. Sat, Chit, Anandam, Chaitanyam, Brahma. It is in that light that we are actually experiencing the sun and moon and all other so-called material sources of light. So this light cannot illumine that. That is the point. That is the absolute state. Na tad bhasayate suryo, na shashanko, shashanko means moon, na pavakaha, pavakaha means fire. Neither sun, nor moon, nor fire. It means none of these so-called, the material sources of light can illumine that supreme reality. That is beyond all these things. This is just like a water and a mirage, as Shankaracharya has said. It is appearing to be true, but what is actually true is, that infinite consciousness called Sat, Chit, Anandam. It is in that consciousness that we are able to see this entire gross universe. So we had come up to this point. <clears throat> and Krishna had said, Yad gatva na nivartante tad dhama paramam mama. Having attained the supreme state, when a seeker of truth, he or she attains the knowledge of the supreme reality, then there is no more returning to this world of bondage. This is a very important point. The whole purpose of the human life is to attain the knowledge of our own true self through all these wonderful processes which Sri Krishna is keeping before us. It is in and through that we can slowly and gradually attain the knowledge of the Supreme Reality, which is also our, our true, true Self. Now, if the Supreme Reality is like this, the Absolute, Sat, Chit, Anandam, what is our nature? We as human beings, how do we understand ourselves? How are we connected to that supreme reality? That is the next question. Now we are proceeding ahead. Now the next question is, what is our relationship with that supreme reality which Krishna talks about, which all the Shastras talk about? That supreme reality which is Brahman, that is fine. It is Sat, Chit, Anandam, it is infinite, it is beyond death, there is no old age in it, there is no suffering in it, it is by nature, it is full of bliss, anandam is his very nature. Then what about you and me? We as human beings, we find ourselves to be in a totally opposite kind of a situation, where we are fraught with experiences of limitation, we are continuously in the grip of all kinds of opposing kinds of experiences and a big chunk of that is actually speaking misery in our life. So what is this human being? And how is this human being connected or what is the connection between this human being as we experience ourselves to be with that supreme entity called God? God, Satchidananda, Brahman. What is the relationship? What is the connection? Let us try to understand that. Who is this individual soul? That is a point. Who is this individual soul called human being? The man, the woman. Who is this person? Krishna gives a beautiful answer. 
who is this individual soul krishna says mamai vansho jeeva doke jeeva bhuta sanatana only this line we shall take so who is this individual soul krishna says this individual soul this human being is what mama eva ansha this human being is my own ansha ansha means what part literally speaking it is what part a part this human being you and i we are all nothing but a part of that supreme reality called brahman now how do we understand the meaning of being a part of that supreme reality now this has this needs further clarification so krishna is saying who is this individual soul this individual soul is god's own part god means again not in any other sense when i use the term god i am referring to sat chit anandam brahma this individual soul is just a part of that mamai vansho jeeva loke jeeva bhutah sanatana this sanatana jeeva this eternal individual soul is what it is my own part krishna is saying wherever krishna uses the first term uh, wherever krishna says my part or me he is always referring to satchit anandam brahma we should keep it in mind while reading bhagavad gita wherever krishna uses the first person while addressing himself he is actually referring to that supreme reality which is brahman now this individual soul is nothing but a part of sat chit anandam brahma how shankaracharya gives a two beautiful example illustration to make us understand this relationship between the individual soul and that supreme reality apparently totally opposed to each other apparently totally opposed to each other how do we understand it bhagwan shankaracharya says <clears throat> suppose if we take 10 different pots pots filled with water and keep these 10 different pots filled with water in open air in the midday we have sun in the sky now in each pot filled with water that sun which is in the sky gets reflected is it not it gets reflected it is as if that sun has entered into the pot and if these pots with the water if they are broken what will happen to that reflection of the sun it will go back to its own source the source is sun itself owing to the pot containing the water which is just like a reflector that sun which is there up in the sky gets reflected in a certain medium that's all is it not this is the exact relationship between we as human beings and that supreme reality this body this mind so many body mind complexes each is just like a pot in which that supreme reality which is like the sun is getting reflected every human being is truly speaking just a reflector of the divine and if this body mind complex this reflector is broken or if it comes to an end through the process of knowledge what will happen this reflection individual soul is just a reflection that reflection goes back to the source which is the thing which is getting reflected in this body mind complex so this is the relationship between the individual soul and the supreme brahman owing to certain limiting ad- adjuncts where that supreme reality is getting reflected we have the experience of these different individual souls shankaracharya gives one more example here to make us understand this point 
again he takes the example of a pot you take a pot an empty pot inside the empty pot there is a space that space inside the empty pot can be said to be ghata akash technically in sanskrit ghata akash akasha means space and ghata means pot a space enclosed inside the pot the space enclosed inside the ghata is what is known as ghata akash space enclosed inside a pot and outside the pot is also space that space is maha akash or the great space actually akash or space is one and indivisible but owing to the limiting adjunct of the pot that indivisible akash the great space appears to become divided into the space enclosed inside the pot as well as the space outside the pot so the space inside the pot and the space outside the pot this is just owing to a very strange limiting adjunct called the pot now here also bhagwan shankaracharya says there is only one indivisible consciousness which is sat chit anandam brahma but owing to so many pot like body mind complexes every body mind complex is just like a pot inside which the same indivisible consciousness appears to have become trapped just like that indivisible great space appears to have become trapped inside the small pot if the pot is broken what happens to that space which is enclosed inside the pot what will happen to it it becomes one with the external great space similarly here also this consciousness which is reflected in every individual it is only appearing to be enclosed in a small body mind complex owing to ignorance when we investigate into the true nature of this consciousness which is getting reflected in every body mind complex we will begin to experience even when we are alive in this body that this consciousness is not limited to this body mind complex it is indivisible you will begin to see your oneness with everybody this is the process of acquiring the true knowledge of the true nature of the supreme reality so this is the connection between the individual soul and the supreme reality called brahman so krishna says what is this individual soul the individual soul is mama eva anshah individual soul is my own part it is just like sun is saying that that reflected sun is my own part so what is the status of that reflected sun is that reflected sun really existing separated from the sun does that reflected sun have any individual and absolute existence separated from the sun does it have it cannot it is just reflected in a certain medium and it appears to be existing as if separate this is exactly what is the status of the so called human being every man and woman and in ignorance this human being thinks that i am existing absolutely and this is the human predicament this is why we suffer in life this is not the right kind of understanding that we are supposed we we this is not the right kind of an understanding which we have about ourselves as long as now see anybody who has got this kind of an understanding everybody thinks that i am existing independently and absolutely no one even questions what is my true identity when we begin to enquire into the true nature of our own true self this mystery will begin to slowly and gradually unravel and that is what a beautiful process and the more and more we go deeper and deeper into our own true self just like these spots in which the sun gets reflected these spots 
and the water they begin to melt away and that reflected sun will begin to understand that it is only a reflection reflection of the true sun which is inside our own hearts that is called illumination that is called atma gyan that is called brahma gyan when we understand i am that i am that i am not this limited being limited to this body mind complex so this is the meaning of krishna's great statement mama eva anshah every individual soul is my own anshah is if it is as if sun is saying that every reflected sun in the part is my own part so beautiful if the reflected sun realizes that actually speaking that reflected sun is nothing but that supreme sun what will happen if every enclosed space inside the pot realizes that actually that enclosed space inside the pot is nothing but the great space the great undivided space what will happen that is what is illumination even while living in this body if we realize our true nature that our true nature is nothing but unseparated non different from that supreme reality what will happen this is what is khandana bhava bandhana this is how we break the bondage of the so called samsara so this is a beautiful statement by krishna where now krishna talks about who is this individual soul <clears throat> what is his true nature he is my own ansh in what sense bhagwan shankar acharya so beautifully gives two examples just like the sun reflected in the water in a pot or a space enclosed inside a pot in both these examples you can say you can see that the reality is indivisible and eternal it appears to become have trapped in a small framework which makes that small framework appear to be really existing and independently existing that is what is ignorance as long as we are ignorant we begin to think that i exist independently and absolutely i don't even doubt about my so called this existence which appears to be absolutely existing truly speaking we have no absolute we as individuals we have no absolute existence our existence is only a borrowed existence the true existence belongs to that supreme reality brahman and brahman alone so beautiful so who is this individual soul krishna says mama eva anshah jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana what about see everything this is what the 15th chapter is so beautiful everything is touched upon the true nature of jeeva is of this kind he is just like the reflection of the supreme reality just like the sun getting reflected in the water inside the pot now if this is the case with this individual jeeva now as long as he takes his individual identity and individuality to be absolutely real he keeps on transmigrating from one body to the other body that is the next subject you see so beautifully krishna takes one after the other if the supreme reality is satchidanandam brahman its reflection is this so called the human being the individual soul and if the individual soul doesn't know this that means as long as he or she is ignorant that person now owing to this ignorance keeps on transmigrating from one body to the other taking birth in this body living a life in that body for few years then leaving that body again assuming another body in this way we have assumed countless numbers of bodies in our past life countless means literally countless there is no count of that it is anadi anadi nobody can determine from what time onwards this strange experience has started well but that is the fate of this so called individual soul as long as that individual soul is ignorant punarapi jananam punarapi maranam punarapi janani jathare shayanam 
ಇಹ ಸಂಸಾರಿ ಖಲು ದುಸ್ತಾರಿ ಕೃಪಯಾ ಪಾರಿ ತಾಹಿ ಮುರಾರಿ ಭಜ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಭಜ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಭಜ ಮೂಢಮತೆ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಿ ಸನ್ನಿಹಿತೆ ಮರಣೆ ನಹಿ ನಹಿ ರಕ್ಷತಿ ಟುಂಕರಂಕರಣೆ ವಾಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನಾನಿಮಸ್ ಅಟ್ರನ್ಸ್ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಸೇಸ್ ಪುನರಪಿ ಜನನ ಅಗೇನ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಪುನರಪಿ ಮರಣ ಅಗೇನ್ ಡಾಯಿಂಗ್ ಪುನರಪಿ ಜನನಿ ಜಠರೆ ಶಯನ ಅಗೇನ್ ಅಂಟರಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಓಂಬ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮದರ್ ಇಹ ಸಂಸಾರಿ ದ ಸಂಸರಣ ಸಂಸರಣ ಸಂಸಾರ ಡಸನ್ ಮೀನ್ ದ ಸಂಸಾರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸಂಸರಣ ದಿಸ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ ಮೈಗ್ರೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ಲೈಫ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲಿವ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ಬಾಡೀಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ರಿಲೇಟಿವ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ಹಸ್ಬೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ವೈಫ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಇನ್ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ಫಾದರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ಮದರ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನೋ ಮೆಮರಿ ಆಫ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಇನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಬಾಡಿ ದ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಶಿಪ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಬಿಲ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೀಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಆಬ್ಸಲೂಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸರೌಂಡಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕೌಂಟ್ಲೆಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಬರ್ತ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಕನ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಇನ್ ಅನ್ ಅನ್ಬ್ರೋಕನ್ ಮ್ಯಾನರ್ and bhagwan shankar ji says ih sansare khalu dustare it is so difficult to come out of this dustaranam dustaranam means extremely difficult to come out of the trap of this birth and death cycle ih sansare khalu dustare kripaya pare tahi murare o lord help me to get out of this cycle of birth and death prapte sannihite marane death is standing close by just imagine how true it is who can be sure that that we shall be waking up alive tomorrow morning can anyone be dead sure about it we don't know <laughs> these are all the ground realities of life facts of life but we are blissfully living as if we are going to live forever that doesn't happen suddenly you will find the some you will get the news that the swami ji has gone at night just disappeared just vanished no rhyme and reason to it that's the ground reality it is just for a few moments prapte sannihite marane death stands death is stalking us death stands just like a shadow behind us and we are blissfully here running after the different objects of this world which is just like a water scene in a mirage expecting to quench our thirst by enjoying these objects which never happens so what is the solution bhaja govindam bhaja govindam bhaja govindam bhaja govindam means nothing else go back to the samsara moolam go back to the roots where alone this mystery where alone your relationship with the supreme reality gets resolved where alone this reflected sun will understand that it is nothing but the supreme sun when that knowledge comes the cycle of birth and death comes to an end as long as the reflected sun thinks that it is absolutely existing it is going to be in the trap of birth and death endlessly but when the reflected sun even while being in that state realizes that it is nothing but one with that supreme sun the end has come liberation has come that is a beautiful thing so the whole secret is to unravel the mystery of the relationship of the individual soul with the supreme soul that is the whole secret of this hindu sanatana dharma every all the devotees should understand one point this is the whole of hindu dharma what we are studying here is the essence of hinduism this is what is hindu dharma's main essential idea is what we are discussing here in this 15th chapter if somebody asks you what is hindu sanatana dharma this what we are discussing here the all the essential points the crux the relationship of the individual soul with the supreme soul if that relationship is properly understood by experience we can put an end to all the sufferings and misery that we have in life and as long as that doesn't happen our sufferings never come to an end so in this way now as i said as long as this wrong notion of this reflected sun thinking itself to be absolutely and independently existing as long as that notion is existing we as human beings we will be born again and again 
again and again in different bodies there is no end so how does this rebirth take place that is the next subject hmm? let's see <clears throat> i take up the uh, eighth verse now in the eighth verse krishna says shariram yadavapnoti yacha api utkramati ishwarah then i go to the second line of the seventh verse manashashthani indriyani prakriti sthani karshati then i come back to the second line of the uh, eighth verse then only the meaning becomes clear grihitva etani sanyati vayur gandhan iva ashayat what does it mean krishna says shariram yadavapnoti yacha api utkramati ishwarah when the individual soul utkramati utkramanam utkramanam means when the individual soul now gives up his gross body at the time of death it's a beautiful thing death is the most beautiful thing to learn from nothing can be more enlightening than this great phenomenon of death which is the fate of every individual soul it is only a matter of time today tomorrow or day after <laughs> death is the greatest teacher it opens our eyes it makes us understand what is true and what is appearing to be true such a wonderful thing it is when this utkramanam takes place when the individual comes to that point of time now when we have to leave this leave our house this is just like our house where we are staying now and nobody wants to leave the house that is a problem we cling to the house but even in our day to day life you will see there will come a situation though you don't want to leave the house you will be forced to leave the house how now see all we wherever we are staying in this building suppose i am staying in this building i am deeply attached to this house i don't want to leave this house but suppose if this house is on fire suppose this house is gutted even when you don't want to leave the house you will be forced to leave the house and run away is it not this is the fact of life similarly this body a time will come when it will be gutted gutted means old age disease it is already happening it is breaking down it is only a matter of time every moment it is disintegrating it is in the process of disintegration it is only a matter of time you can look into an old man or an old woman how the whole structure is disintegrated it is gone the senses are not working the mind is in darkness and the heart is still hoping and wanting so many things it is in darkness that is the dilapidated house house which the individual soul doesn't want to leave and yet he will be forced he or she will be forced to leave that is called the moment of death which is everybody's fate now the wise man also dies but he dies in a different way that's a different thing so here krishna is discussing this moment of death utkramanam yachapi utkramati ishwarah when this jeeva he leaves this body and shariram yadavapnoti on the one side he is leaving his present gross body and now he is ready to assume a new body rebirth at that time how do, how does it how does the jeeva do this he does it manashashthani indriyani prakriti sthani karshati the jeeva he he takes or he draws the mind and the sense organs towards itself of the old dilapidated body from there dilapidated gross body the, in death what happens is only the gross body is left behind but the subtle body is what transmigrates to put it in a simple without going into the complications of it the simple matter is in death what happens is the gross body the gross broken dilapidated body is left behind the subtle body is what leaves the gross body and assumes a new gross body the subtle body is what mana and 
indriyani all the sense organs so the jiva draws to itself the mind and the sense organs and how does it draw a beautiful illustration is given here grihitva etani sanyati vayur gandha niva iva ashaya just like a wind which is blowing what does the wind do the wind when the wind is blowing it will carry along with it the fragrances the fragrance of different flowers around it suppose we are standing close to a say a garden a garden which is full of fragrant flowers if you are standing close by the wind which blows from that side of the garden you will see it will bring wonderful fragrances along with it the wind carrying the fragrances from the different fragrant flowers is it not just like this individual soul takes this mind and the sense organs along with it leaving the old gross body there and entering into a new gross body this is the whole phenomenon of rebirth so this is how this individual soul leaves the old gross body and assumes a new gross body once again i'll read this shloka it is so beautiful you can read it in this way shariram yad avapnoti yacha api utkramati ishwarah manashashthani indriyani prakritisthani karshati grihitva etani sanyati vayur gandhan iva ashayat if you read it in this way you will understand the meaning very clearly in short it says when the individual soul leaves the old gross body and assumes a new body what does it do it draws to itself the mind and the sense organs just like the wind carrying the fragrance of from the different flowers this is how the individual soul leaves one gross body and enters into another gross body now this we have done countless numbers of time in the past and usually we are scared of death shastra still there is nothing to be scared of death actually death is not to be scared at all this has happened so many times and this will go on as long as we the individual soul doesn't understand its connection with the supreme soul this will go on as long as the reflected sun doesn't understand its relationship with the true sun in the sky if the reflected sun understands its true relationship with the sun in the sky the problem is put to an end then and there itself <coughs> then what <coughs> so which are these organs which the individual soul draws to itself or which are the organs through which the individual soul through which we are enjoying this world to for the individual soul to so called experience and enjoy this world it needs organs so what are which are these organs krishna says in the next verse shrotram chakshu sparshanam cha rasanam ghranam eva cha adishthaya manaschayam vishayan upasevate so beautiful vishayan upasevate vishaya vishaya means the different objects the individual soul experiences the different objects vishayan upasevate upasevanam upasevanam means enjoying the different objects of the world individual soul enjoys the different objects of the world through what shrotram ears chakshuhu eyes sparshanam touch rasanam taste tongue and granam evacha granam means our sense of smell these are the five sense organs through which the individual soul is experiencing the so called the gross world that's why i always say what is this gross world it is nothing but our five sense organs suppose if we don't have this five sense organs the world itself will vanish suppose just imagine you don't have this five sense organs you won't be able to experience this world the world won't even exist <laughs> so what is this world it is nothing but the five senses but the truth is somewhere behind it 
That is why what we are seeing through the sensory system is a big mystery. And we have an unquestioned sense of realism about what we are experiencing through these five holes called sense organs. Five holes, you know, eyes, two small holes, ears, two small holes, nostrils, two small holes. These are all holes through which the individual soul residing inside this body is constantly perceiving. Enjoying means what? Perceiving. Perception of something outside. What is outside is always a mystery. That is why that mysterious nature of something outside is what is referred to as Ashwatham. What a beautiful term it is. What we are experiencing through the five holes of the sensory system, something outside, it is mysterious, it is Ashwatham. Ashwatham means which is continuously changing. Pratikshana Manyatha Subhava. Every moment it is undergoing change. Drishta Nashta Swarupa. Even in the act of perception, it is getting destroyed and disintegrated. Where is the thing which is actually existing? In every perception, whatever we are perceiving, the big question stands before us, before every seeker of truth, that where is the thing which is actually existing? So this is the search for reality. So this individual soul, he upasevate, vishayan upasevate, he experiences the different vishayas through the five sense organs. Shrotram, Chakshus, Parshanam, cha, Rasanam, Ghranam, Eva, cha, Adishthaya, Manaschayam, and along with Mana. Mind is important. Mind is the sixth organ. Without the involvement of human mind, there is no perception possible. In all perception, this perception is a very technical term. It's a scientific term, psychological term, perception. How are we perceiving things? In all perception, Involvement of mind is indispensable. There is no experience possible without the involvement of the human mind. So whatever we are experiencing, it is not nothing but mind plus the five sense organs. This is what we understand by world. Do we have any other experience of so-called world outside of the mind and the five sense organs? Outside of human mind and five sense organs, do we have anything in our experience? We don't have. So the whole thing called, the whole thing which is uh, getting encompassed in this term called world, Jagat, is nothing but mind and the five sense organs. Now whether this is true or not, that is the real inquiry. That is what is samsara vriksham which is Ashwatham. It is something like a magic show of a magician. It is just like a water scene in a mirage. If one understands the true nature of this world in this way, something wonderful will happen. <clears throat> now it is in this way that this individual soul is experiencing this entire jagat. Now, two beautiful verses comes here. Krishna says, Utkramantam sthitam vapi, bhunjanam vagunan vitam, vimudha nanu pashyanti, pashyanti jnana chakshusha. Beautiful. Krishna says, Utkramantam sthitam vapi, bhunjanam vagunan vitam, vimudha nanu pashyanti, vimudha. A beautiful term, which Shankaracharya is also very much fond of. Moodha, Vimoodha. A Moodha person is a person who is non-discriminating or whose mind is completely clouded. Clouded by what? Clouded by the different desires for seen and unseen objects of pleasures. Shankaracharya says, as long as the human mind is clouded by the desires for seen as well as unseen objects of pleasures. That mind is an hijacked mind. The mind is an hijacked mind. Our objects, they hijack the human mind. And when the mind is so hijacked, how can that mind will ever have the perception of the reality? So, vimudha nanu pashyanti. In this so-called, a person who is non-discriminating 
or a person whose mind is totally hijacked by the the desire for the different objects of the pleasures nanu pashyanti he won't be able to see this atman how he says utkramantam sthitam vapi bhunjanam va gunan vitam even when the individual soul leaves the body utkramantam means when utkramanam takes place now the person is dying the individual soul is leaving its body and then what sthitam vapi even while the individual soul is living in this body see we are all now alive in this body a time will come when we will have to leave this body we will have to leave this house let us do it happily it will be a wonderful thing otherwise there is lot of pain and suffering in that there is a happy way of leaving this body or there's a lot of tears and struggle involved in that a wise man will leave this body very happily <laughs> <laughs> knowing that his true nature is something else he is absolutely non attached to this death is the greatest and the most beautiful phenomenon now that doesn't mean that we are going to commit suicide okay let us not have that idea <laughs> this is knowledge self knowledge should come and demystifying this phenomenon called death the mystery of death and the fear of death is completely gone for the person who knows this truth wonderful thing then life and death itself loses its meaning meaning means it is no more confusing and mystifying to that person he he negotiates life and he negotiates death in the most cheerful manner in a most unaffected manner is this not something wonderful the goal of human life is to live and lead such a beautiful life not to be confused about life not be confused about death so beautiful so this can happen only when the individual soul understands its relationship with the supreme soul this can only happen when the reflected sun understands its relationship with the sun in the sky then there is no more fear of life and death so here krishna is saying utkramantam sthitam va pi bhunjanam va gunanvitam whether the individual soul is now leaving the body or whether whether the individual soul is living in the body and even while experiencing the different objects of this world and experiencing happiness and misery in short in the process of the individual souls undergoing all this different kinds of experiences whether at the time of death or whether when he is alive or whether when he is enjoying the different objects of this world vimudha nanu pashyanti this confused man the man in ignorance he doesn't see the supreme reality in it but pashyanti gyana chakshushah but that person in whom the gyana chakshu the eye of knowledge has become opened up he can see it he can perceive it is that supreme sun reflected in so many reflectors which is playing this beautiful drama of life and death so beautiful a person whose inner eye of knowledge is opened pashyanti gyana chakshushah vimudha nanu pashyanti the foolish man the ignorant man will not be able to see that supreme sun reflected in so many reflectors and playing the drama of life and death he won't be able to see it but the wise man in whom the eye of knowledge is open that person will see it for him it is a matter of direct perception he will see it is one reality one undivisible reality appearing to be divided in so many reflectors and playing this drama of life and death what a beautiful new vision emerges before our eyes so this is the new vision should which is krishna is bestowing on us a new drishti shastra drishti brahma drishti or divya drishti and this is what actually krishna was giving to arjuna fight the battle of life with this divya drishti so beautiful arjuna was confused what to do and what not to do owing to what owing to ignorance krishna was bestowing that divya drishti to arjun so that arjun becomes capable to negotiate this drama of this life this is not only arjuna's 
Krishna's bestowing of his grace on Arjuna, Krishna is bestowing his grace on all of us so that we can develop this Dhrivya Drishti and intelligently negotiate this drama of this life. So beautiful. So Krishna is saying, Utkramantam sthitam vapi bunjanam vagunanvitam whether the person is now leaving the body or the, whether the person is alive in the body or even in the process of perceiving and enjoying the different objects of this world the foolish man doesn't see that it is the same one reality which is playing this drama of life but the wise man the wise man can see it very clearly so beautiful so we have to now develop that wise drishti that drishti of jnana jnana chakshu has come one more verse i'll take and i'll stop <clears throat> the 11th verse krishna says yatanto yoginas chainam pasyant atmanya vasthitam yatanto api akrtatmano nainam pasyanti achetasah beautiful Again, the same thing. Some people see, some people don't see. Some people see the reality, some people don't see the reality. Now, that is the question. Krishna says, Yatanto yoginas chainam. Yogi, yogina. A person is a yogi. A yogi is a person who is given to the spiritual pursuit. He is that reflected son now who wants to know its true nature as the supreme son. He is a yogi. Yogi means that reflected sun in the pot. That reflected sun is now wanting to know its own true nature as the supreme sun in the sky. That person is a yogi. So such a yogi, yatanto, he is diligent and he is striving now. Yatanto yoginas chainam. Pashyanti atmani avasthitam. That person, owing to his wonderful spiritual life, Fulfilling all those conditions which Krishna has mentioned till now, Nirmana Moha, Jita Sangha Dosha, Adhyatma Nitya, Vinivritta Kama, Dvandvair Vimukta, Sukha Dukkha Sanyi, Kachanti Amurha, Padam Avyayam Tat. When the person, that kind of yogi, when he fulfills all these conditions, that reflected sun with all these qualities, that reflected sun is looking at the real sun now and getting connected with the real sun. So what will happen? Yatanto yoginas chainam pasyanti atmani avasthitam. That reflected son will realize that I am that. I am the Atman. I am the Atman. I am the Brahman. I am that supreme reality. I am not limited to this water in the pot. The reflected son inside the pot will realize that no, I am not limited to this water seen in this pot, this small pot. I am not reflected. I am not limited to the small body mind complex. This realization comes to this yogi who lives this kind of a life. But for the other person, yatanto pi akrtatmano. The other person is akrtatmana. Akrtatmam, akrtatmano means a person whose mind is still not purified. Akrtatmano. I will read what Shankaracharya says. What is the meaning of akrtatmano? Akrtatmano means. <clears throat> a person who lacks self-control, who has not purified himself through austerity and control of sense organs, who has not desisted from bad conduct, who is not tranquil, who is proud and arrogant by nature. These are all the qualities opposing the search for the supreme truth. A person who is arrogant, proud, who is not self-controlled, who has not given up his all so-called bad conduct, a conduct, conduct which is not tallying with the principles of truth and dharma, they can never come to this great realization. It is impossible. That is why the foundational thing as far as this great experience is concerned is what? Truthfulness and dharma. Anyone who is deviating from these principles will never be able to experience the supreme reality. So, akrtatmano means who is of this kind. Such a person, Krishna is saying, yatantopi akrtatmano 
नाइनम पश्यंति अचेत सह अचेत स मीन्स नॉन डिस्क्रिमिनेटिंग दिस नॉन डिस्क्रिमिनेटिंग मैन पिस पर्सन हु इज कन्फ्यूज ए पर्सन हु विल बी ऑफ दिस काइंड अनकंट्रोल्ड गिवन टू ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ रॉन्ग काइंड्स ऑफ कंडक्ट एंड हु इज प्राउड हु इज नॉट ट्रैंकुअल हु इज नॉट प्रैक्टिसिंग दीज थिंग्स सच ए पर्सन विल नॉट बी एबल टू understand his connection with the supreme reality so beautiful so i'll just sum up what we have discussed today in short we started our discussion with the point that <clears throat> krishna had told about the supreme reality which is brahman now the next question is what is our status what is the connection of this human being with that supreme reality the connection is just like the connection of the reflected sun inside the pot and the sun in the sky just like the sun in the sky gets reflected in the water in the pot similar is this human being the human being is nothing but the individual soul is nothing but the reflection of that supreme reality that is the meaning of mama eva ansha her this human being is nothing but my ansha my part means he is just a reflection and our body mind is just a reflector i always tell we are all just reflector in fact this entire world is just a reflector it is just a mirror in which consciousness is getting reflected there is shankaracharya's one magnanimous composition which is known as takshina murti stotram the first verse itself is so beautiful incomparable i should say naturally nothing can be compared in one verse what he paints he says vishvam darpana drishyamana nagari so beautiful i am not going to the we don't have time now this vishvam this entire world is what darpana drishyamana nagari just what nagari means a city just like a city is seen in a mirror this whole world is nothing but just like a city seen in a mirror it is just a reflection reflection seen in a mirror so beautiful we are all just like so many reflectors and every one is reflecting the divine every one is reflecting god to understand this is the very purpose of the human life and when we do that in fact that is what really makes human life so beautiful everything becomes so elevated human relationships become so elevated the whole standard of human dealings will be of a different kind altogether all the mutual relationships which we have everything is state, taken to a such a lofty level and that is what we see in the lives of all the great masters we worship ram and sita krishna and radha and all these great figures what you just look into the lives it is a life of supreme knowledge self knowledge where relationships are taken to the highest level that is the point so here krishna is showing us mamai van sho jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana this is the status of the human being and then if that individual soul doesn't realize its connection with the supreme reality it keeps on transmigrating so how the transmigration takes place that is at the time of death it takes away the body and the sense organs and leaving the old gross body it enters into the new gross body and even when the individual individual soul is alive in a certain body how does he perceive this world he perceives the world through the five sense organs and the mind shrotram chakshu sparshanam chaiva rasanam ghranam eva cha adishthaya manashchayam vishayan upasevate this individual soul perceives the world through the five sense organs and the mind and then whether while living the body or while existing in the body and even while experiencing this entire world vimudha nanu pashyanti pashyanti gyana chakshushah the foolish man the man whose mind is clouded by the different desires for the seen and unseen objects of pleasures that person won't be able to see it is one divine which is reflecting in so many reflectors he won't be able to see it but the wise man he sees it that it is one divine reality which is which is being reflected in all the reflectors and finally he says yatanto yoginashchainam pashyanti atmanyavastitam the yogi 
who has purified himself, he will straight away realize his connection with that supreme reality. Just like that reflected sun will clearly realize, I am just a reflection. Reflection of what? That indivisible supreme reality, the sun. This realization comes to that person. Whereas the other person whose mind is impure, to that person, this realization doesn't come. Let's stop here. Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Tatsat